say in that is the reason it started was um, uh, a combination of me feeling guilty that I hadn't gotten around to doing any angel investing yet, um, and also that Jessica was talking to this VC fund about becoming their VP of marketing. And the VCs were taking so long to make up their minds. I said, fuck them, we'll just start our own thing, right? So if that VC fund in Boston had not been so typically slow moving, Y Combinator would never have existed. Paul Graham, one of the founders of Y Combinator, has helped many startups get on their feet. Airbnb, Dropbox, Twitch, and Reddit are just some of the big names he had his hand in helping. Born in 1964 and raised in the 70s, Paul was intrigued by all things computers, movies, and television. While attending Harvard University for computer science, he found that the curriculum took the excitement out of programming. He was a hacker at heart and thus decided to design his own computer language with fellow hacker Robert Morris called Lisp that's specifically geared towards advanced hackers. After receiving his PhD in computer science, he went on to obtain a design degree from the Rhode Island School of Design. He also attended a painting program in the Academia in Florence, Italy. Back in the States and broke, Paul would paint and work as a consultant to maintain his lifestyle. After hearing a story on the radio about Netscape, an internet company, he decided to start his own company with his friend Robert using Lisp, the programming language they created. Together they founded ViaWeb, in which they sold to Yahoo for $45 million. In the years that followed, he developed an apprenticeship consulting firm called Y Combinator. Paul was always on the path of self-discovery and not conforming to what was expected of him. I feel that this relates to my life. In my family, I continue to reset the benchmark of what we are capable of. I am the first of my family to receive a high school diploma, a bachelor's degree, complete a full enlistment term in the army, and on the path to achieving a master's degree. Not conforming to society and what it tried to dictate I should be, I was able to raise my self-awareness and strive to change my station in life. Like Paul, I wish to enlighten myself so that I may achieve and help others to aspire to achieve more. When I get the opportunity to ask Paul Graham a couple of questions, I will ask him if he thinks trial and error is a better mentor than an actual and living and breathing one. And was the period when he decided to study design a helpful guide to rediscover what his purpose was? Or was it a deliberate move to acquire some form of insight and gain the ability to solve problems from a fresh perspective? After reading Robert Greene's Mastery, I have a better grasp on social intelligence. One of the deadly sins that could have the most impact on me is self-obsessiveness. I feel that self-obsessiveness can impact me along my journey. Too often, I come across people who are all about themselves. They will promise you something but never deliver on their end. I go out of my way to be available for that type of person, assuming that they will follow suit when the time comes, but they never do. When this happens, I tend to take it personal and see them as inconsiderate or selfish. Learning to see things from their point of view will help me understand how to give them the incentive to keep their word. I must also learn not to take it personal and move on from there. The other is flightiness. Similar to self-obsessiveness, I hold people to their word. I tend to see this trend in people that I meet. The wishy-washiness nature irks me. I understand that we all suffer from some form of flightiness from time to time, but I fall for those who take it to the extreme. Once I encounter these types, I have a hard time distancing myself from them because I usually develop a bond or friendship with them. Learning to spot this quickly and cutting them from my network will be the key in not getting caught up in this deadly reality.